Friends, are you ready to Brave the Wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan, Brave the Wild, is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Double Twist. Thank you once again for joining me today. Of course, Google Play Music is now part of the fold. Great to be on board with that as well. Minnesota Wild, they played four games this past weekend. Pretty much as I expected, they split, but it was a couple different games, I guess. I, yeah, it just is what it is. Minnesota Wild end up beating Edmonton, beating Philadelphia, and then losing to Chicago and Vegas. I believe I flip-flopped Vegas and Philly because of what's always happening with Philly and what always happens with Vegas. We usually beat Vegas. This time we lost to Vegas. And uh, Philadelphia, well, very good game for Minnesota there. No doubt about that. Edmonton Oiler game, you got to see Kapokakin and give up five goals, but you got to see the Minnesota Wild score six. You got to see a pretty epic fight between Darnell Nurse and uh, Jordan Greenway. It's a pretty exciting game. Carson Soucy continues to just play out of his mind. The guy is outstanding. He's been definitely the surprise of the season. Uh, a lot of us were hopeful, like this fifth round pick out of Minnesota Duluth from uh, Alberta, <laughs> from Alberta, Canada, of course outstanding player for uh, Minnesota Duluth. Didn't really stand out in a big way there, but was always solid. Always rock solid. Always got the job done. Now you're seeing some offensive skills go along with his rock solid defense. Completely different player than he was a year ago. He was a plus four against the Edmonton Oilers in a 6-5 thriller in XL Energy Center. And like I keep saying, Minnesota always beats Edmonton when they're good, and then we seem to lose to them when they're not good. So, I don't understand. Uh, You see little bits and pieces, little flashes out of Brennan Mental. That passing ability, the ability to move the puck. He's really got it. I think he's a future power play quarterback in the National Hockey League. But, of course, Ryan Suter is who he is at this stage. Matt Dumba, a little better performance. Finally got a point this week. It was last night, finally, or two nights ago, pardon me, with the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, Pretty funny to think how long it took for Matt Dumba to finally register a point. I mean, we're talking like a month there. Ridiculous. Um, Jonas Jordine continues his strong play. Carson Soucy, again, just can't say enough. This was a fun, epic battle, back and forth situation. And again, the epic fight between uh, Darnell Nurse and Jordan Greenway. Greenway standing up for his teammate, lines mate, and all that good stuff on the Geek Squad, Geek Line. The big rig stepping up for, uh, <laughs> for Luke Cunning. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, you got to see Darnell Nurse. He got uppercut in the mouth. I believe his tongue was bit. That might be what it was. That might be what caused all that bleeding. Uh, for uh, Darnell Nurse, there was a lot of intense talk back and forth. That th- This was a real fight. Like You, you talk hockey fights, sometimes it looks like they're just kind of wrestling each other to the ground. Almost like kids, just kind of wrestling each other around. But this was like a real, legitimate fight. Like a fight of fights. It was pretty bad. Like These two guys were <laughs> intense. Like There was some pure hatred between these two guys. Crazy stuff. You got to see the skill and, st- uh, and talent of uh, Leon Dreisettle, Connor McDavid, each of them getting their 20th goals of the season. You got to see even James Neal, who struggled so much for Calgary, who will be one of our opponents this upcoming week. It's funny how James Neal and Mike Smith were both on the uh, <laughs> Calgary Flames last year, and then uh, Lucic and Talbot were both on the Edmonton Oilers. It's just weird. It's just, I don't know, two arch-rival type teams that just hate each other, the Edmonton, Alberta, and Calgary, Alberta rivals, the Alberta rivals. Uh, very much, uh, <laughs> very much exchanging players via free agency. Weird stuff. Not a trade. I can't imagine these two teams trading very often, but, well, interesting stuff. Nice to see Jordan Greenway again getting his fourth goal of the season. Marcus Foligno finally getting his third after starting out very strong. The guy, obviously, one of the best players on this team in a lot of ways. The skill is very much there for Foligno. As good of a fourth-line player as you'll see. Uh, consistent and such. It was such a shame when he missed time, but always, again, it's next man up, and that's the way it is with the Minnesota Wild of late. Next man up, next man up, next man up, next man up. But you'll see the Vegas Golden Knights lineup. It's what Lou Nanny would call the Iowa Wild. It basically was. Z- Zucker getting his 12th goal of the season in this one. Eric Stahl is ninth, and he has eclipsed 1,000 points during the course of this week. Congratulations to Eric Stahl. What an amazing career he has had. Uh, Cunnan also added his seventh goal in this game. That geek line, geek squad has been awesome. The third line, you just never want to break them up. Uh, They're all close to the same age. They work together so well. Interestingly, all all three of them have played center in their careers, uh, college or juniors or whatever. They've been all outstanding working together. Good, solid defense. Frustrating other teams playing physical uh, gritty hockey and they're working together nicely, adding some points and all that. Eric's the next 10th point of the season on Luke Cunning's seventh goal of the season. Nice to see these guys really stepping up. What a fun game. Sad to see uh, 
Boy, Kakin and giving up five goals. What a bummer. But he did face one of the best teams in the NHL and really the best lines in hockey, basically. Uh, two, two of the top players in the whole game and the top leading scorers in the entire NHL, Drysdale and Connor McDavid. But a 6-5 to five victory over a pretty damn good team. As much as Calgary fans hate to admit it. Yep. <laughs> I, I, you know, <laughs> they sure do on that fireside chat. Philadelphia Flyers, what a fun night. A Carter Hart, you're going against, uh, well, again, like I'll keep saying, this is really, it's Ron Hextall's team. It's Ron Hextall's the reason why this team is getting better. Again, he kind of gutted things out, frustrated people. Maybe he wasn't the nicest guy in the world, but so what? If you can draft well and, you know, go with the patient approach, it eventually pays off, unless you're Edmonton, which it eventually did. It took like 20 years, but yeah, yeah. Well, it took about, well, 10 years about, actually, to be honest, with from their Stanley Cup uh, final appearance. They almost won it. Carter Hart looks like a good, solid goalie, but Minnesota was just a little better than Carter Hart in this game. Minnesota in general, just getting the job done at the end of the day. Solid, solid team, solid game for Minnesota. Eric Stahl, there it was. This was the night of nights for him, the 1,000 point. Very, very happy for him. Couple of goals in the game. Very strong overall performance by the aforementioned Eric Stahl. He has just been outstanding. Uh, he stepped up in a big way, leading the club in scoring ever since that horrible start to the season. Now with 27 points in 35 games, he's been outstanding. Again, 12 goals on the season. Zach is the only guy ahead of him as he's tied with Zucker overall at the end of this week. What a strong week for uh, Jason. Uh, excuse me, Eric Stahl. Shame to see him as a minus 10, but it's crazy. A lot of those top two lines, they're all minus, 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 except Kevin Fiala, who again has stepped up mightily after an extremely slow start to the season. And again, a very weak introduction to his uh, Minnesota Wild career last year. Still kind of skittish from that femur injury, but a plus two now. Brad Hunt's kind of vanished off the face of the earth, but it, it is what it is. You know, I mean, I'm not too surprised, I guess. Ryan Donato continuing to play a very stellar play. He's been playing center on the second line off and on, playing wing on the top line, center on the second. It, it's the way it is. When you get guys like Cuevu with injuries and such, obviously it's a big, big loss. So obviously losing him via free agency or retirement in the summer, as much as, you know, you want to move on, and it's great to see the young guys play. It's just still, it, it's a loss. It is a loss uh, at the end of the day. Obviously, it's great to see young guys play. We love to see that, and um, they're starting to pay off. You're starting to see hope. You're starting to hear even Judd Zolgat, of all people, saying the pieces are actually are in place. When just a month or two ago, we were like, my goodness, we're literally looking at the top five pick, which would be good, good to have, but... I don't know. There's some nice players on this team, believe it or not. Uh, young guys developing that look like there's some promise, and none of them are stars. Obviously, Yul Erickson at Greenway Cunning, none of those guys are stars. Fiala's got a ton of potential, but again, not a star. He's a piece. He's a piece. He's a second line left wing, basically, is what he is. Second line, maybe middle six, but I'd say second line. I, could, I wouldn't consider him a top line player, but maybe someday. Uh, Kirill Kaprizov, if he's left shot, though, there, there you go. I mean, you know, Kirill Kaprizov left. Fiala, or excuse me, top top uh, top line and left, and Fiala second line. You're pretty good there. Parisi should be third at the end of the day, but he's a good strong second still at this stage of his career, and the state of the Minnesota Wild, the situation there, blah blah blah, and other guys hopefully coming up like Kovanov who could be outstanding in the future, not too distant future. Very fun game against Philly though. Overall four to one victory for the Minnesota Wild. It's a bummer how Brennan Mendel has not registered a point, but you're still seeing signs of what he can do. Minnesota, very uh, puck dominant in this game. And uh, lots of blocked shots and all that. Been a really solid game. Everybody blocking shots in this one. Ryan Hartman blocking two. Playing gutsy hockey out there. Uh, good for him. Always love him. Um, Philadelphia was missing some players, of course. You got to see Tyler Pitlick for only four minutes on the fourth line. Chris Stewart came back. It got kind of back and forth with him a bit on uh, multiple occasions. <laughs> Interesting with Chris Stewart uh, in the game. Some chippy play between him and some others, but it is what it is. He, that's who he is. He's a fourth line player at this stage of his career, and that's kind of really all he is in this in the modern game of hockey. You have to be fast, and Chris Stewart just plays a different brand of hockey where he would have been more successful in the 90s, per se. Tyler Pitlick, former gopher, of course, uh, not standing out too much so far for Philly, but We'll see. He's the least played fourth line guy in this game. Unfortunately for him, solid win though, and Minnesota shutting Philly down in a big, big way. Alex Dalek only faced 18 shots in this one. Solid, solid night for the Minnesota Wild. Like to continue to move forward here. 
Chicago Blackhawks, it's just, I mean, is it the same old story or is it the same old story? I mean, is it another hat trick for Patrick? Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why I say hat trick for Patrick because it's it's just all the time. He's the all time leading scorer against Minnesota. It's ridiculous. He is just you know he's he's a wild killer. There's no question about it. No question about it. Kevin Fiala though also doing his Patrick Kane impression, getting a couple of goals in this one. Good for him. Very nice to see. Just a crying shame. Poor Kakinen. Ah, he gave up five goals against the Edmonton Oilers and four in this one because obviously empty netter. They ended up wrapping things up. That was Patrick's hat trick. Patrick Hattrick. Yeah, that's cute. 18 goals in the season. Empty netter from Jonathan Toews. No, Jonathan Taves. I know. I'm just messing around. Jonathan Toews, right? <laughs> that's about it. Kevin Fiala, though. Nice to see him stepping up. Couple goals here. Unfortunately, Minnesota not able to win. But again, Kevin Fiala tying things up late in the second period. Made us all feel good. Eric Stahl ultimately getting his 12th goal on the season on the power play after Patrick Kane scored two goals in the first half or so of the first period, which just left you feeling, has anything changed? Has anything changed? It's like Minnesota's playing a little better. Chicago, oh, they're the last place team in the division. But when these two teams, has anything changed? Seriously, has anything changed? No, nothing's changed. It's either Patrick Kane or Jonathan Taves getting a hat trick, and Brandon Saad finds a way to score every single time we play. And Corey Crawford looks like, uh, you know, he wasn't that good. But, uh, well, no, it wasn't even Corey Crawford in this one. It was Robin Leonard. That's why. <laughs> if it was Corey Crawford, it would have been 2-1. to one. <laughs> I'm just bullcrapping around. But Robin Leonard's been getting most of the action. Corey Crawford's been banged up and all that. And Robin Leonard, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't know. He's just an adequate goalie, obviously. He's been a bit of a journeyman in the net in the NHL. Alex Debrincat, obviously an up-and-comer still with the Blackhawks along with Kirby Duck. Kirby Duck, he's got a nice future in the league. Minimal ice time so far, though. Again, it's just, you know, you're getting started. You're really young, you know, and all that. you got to fill out physically and get used to the game, the speed of the game, the uh, toughness of the game. But you look at this defensive core, and it's like, huh, Connor Murphy, I mean, good for him. Two points in the game, but Connor Murphy. Okay, Eric Gustafson, okay. Ole Mata, all right. Brent Seabrook, uh, there you go. Yeah, he used to be good, but he's kind of like, I don't know, Dennis Gilbert and Adam Boquist. Boquist. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not the players you remember back in the day. Of course, Devin Dubnik finally coming back, opened up in the uh, athletic article. May talk about that in segment number two. We'll see. Uh, opened up a bit about his wife's health, but again, you know, it's just it's a crying shame what she was going through and what he's going through, but good to see him back in practice and all that. Yul Eriksson Eck ultimately scratching this one with injury. So it's like, again, that's why you're looking at the situation with the Wild. Oof, I mean, it's like, who's left? Who's left? It's ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Injury after injury after injury. And uh, the the ice time was balanced out pretty intensely in this one. You got to see uh, uh, Matt Zuccarello banged up as well. He's down to only 13 minutes in this game. Uh, Gerald Mayhew called up, getting some ice time with Victor Rask and such. You ought to get Gerald Mayhew in there, of course. It is what it is. Victor Rask actually moved up a bit, moved up in the Vegas game. Really, uh, Minnesota being depleted, so it's not hugely surprising that we lost these last couple of games, but nice to see Kevin Fiala stepping up in a big, big way. A couple of goals against the Blackhawks. Five shots on goal. A very nice game for Kevin Fiala, but again, not enough. Hattrick for Patrick. Same old crap. And they're still selling out. I mean, Chicago is a big city. But there is a respect for this club. Even though they're not winning games right now, you still got Patrick Kane, you still got Jonathan Taves, and that's more than enough to go and watch the Blackhawks. As much as we're sick of them, the Blackhawk fans aren't sick of them. 21,000 people in attendance to watch, you know, two teams that aren't doing so hot generally in the standings at the moment. And I'm not trying to be a jackass. It's just how it is. We're not, you know, we're not too high in the standings at the moment. We'll see. We'll see. Kevin Fiala keeps keeps this up. Who knows? Kevin Fiala, among other guys. But, um, I mean, you have Patrick Kane on your team. I mean, I'd buy a ticket to go watch Patrick Kane. You know, I mean, shoot, as a pain in the butt as it, as it is to go to games, especially probably in that city. Whew, jeez. Um, it's Patrick Kane, man. And if he's going to get a hat trick in a game, I mean, you're going to remember that forever. I mean, I saw Marion Gabrick get a hat trick. I saw Antti Laxanen get the hat trick. He's the first, huh? First Minnesota Wild player to ever get a hat trick. Antti Laxanen way back in the day, because Vancouver, I believe. Back when we actually were beating Vancouver, then we started losing them all the time. Then it got to be back and forth, and it became a pretty bitter rivalry for a couple of years, and it was a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, I digress. Uh, great, uh, 
Great night for Patrick. Good night for Fiala. Uh, well above that. Very good night for Fiala, we'll say. But again, hat, a hat trick is a hat trick. And yeah, it's just, it's a, uh, psh, whatever. Blackhawks and Wild. What Has anything changed? You know, too soon? Yeah, has anything changed? Three to two, Vegas Golden Knights. The Vegas Golden Knights finally beat the Minnesota Wild again. This is only the second time in history the Vegas Golden Knights beat the Wild. You got to see Matt Dumba have probably his best game of the season. He got his, his he finally got his 10th point. Hey, he shoots and scores, or at least he put four shots on goal. He blocked four shots. Very, uh, very solid game for him. He's still a minus one. Vegas is playing really good hockey at the moment. Matt Zuccarello added a goal, his eighth of the season, very end of the first period. He thought, okay, after a very back and forth game defensively between the two teams. Opportunities, though, certainly for both clubs. But not as many as in other games. Two two pretty good defensive teams. And, of course, Vegas has players that can score. And Marc-Andre Fleury, again, you know, coming back from the death of his father. Both Minnesota Wild goalie Devin Dubnik and, of course, Marc-Andre Fleury going through some things. Unfortunately, Andre, Mark, Marc-Andre Fleury, his father, has passed away. Uh, where Devin Dubnik, his wife, hopefully will continue to recover. And we'll keep praying for her, of course. God bless her. Uh, Vegas, just the better team. I mean, just the better team. It is what it is. They're playing very good hockey. Uh, they'd struggled for a while. They were actually out of the playoffs for for a, a spell there, as they say in Australia, for a spell. And, uh, well, they're back at it again. They've been on an influential run, second place. They're only one point behind <clears throat> first place Arizona. Did you ever think you'd say that? But, yeah, Arizona's good. They got Darcy Kemper. They got Kelly Clayton Keller who's stepping up again after a disappointing sophomore season. Sophomore slump, junior jump, as I like to call it, for Clayton Keller. And, of course, Darcy Kemper's one of the better goalies in the NHL. <laughs> I didn't think I'd say that very often, did I? But, yeah, uh, despite the losses recently, though, Minnesota still only three points behind Calgary, of all teams, for the eighth seed in the uh, Western Conference, the second wild card, we'll call it, which is the eighth seed. Um, we'll be playing them coming up, and, I don't know, our, his- our recent history versus Calgary is, whew. So we'll talk about that when that comes up. This was a fun game, generally speaking, but a crying shame. Wild can't get the job done at the end of the day. Uh, just just could not could not get uh, could not get past Flurry down the stretch. Did get one, but then couldn't get the last one. Nice effort again. Kevin Fiala, though, getting his 12th assist on Zach Parisi's goal. Love that line as well, Fiala. Parisi, at least. Fiala and Parisi, at least, and Koivu, but, but now it's been Donato a lot of times working together. The lines just keep changing. It's almost impossible to keep up with. But, uh, boy, uh, Donato Fiala Parisi is pretty nice, actually. As, a, as on this particular night, it was Victor Rask. It's just unbelievable. Uh, you're seeing Luke Johnson out there getting some minutes. Nico Sturm at center. Luke Johnson at center. What a mess, uh, Luke Johnson, because no Eul Eriksson Ek. Unbelievable. No no Eul Eriksson Ek. So it's down to, or Jewel Eriksson Ek, pardon me. Luke Johnson. This was a, as of the Vegas game. Ryan, Ryan Donato, Luke Conan. Uh, again, it's like, it's like how, how do you even keep up with this? And of course, fourth line, you think Victor Rask centering Felino and Hartman, but it was Nico Sturm, which is nice. But uh, then you got Eric Stahl. And, and, and Nico Sturm was banged up in Iowa. Eric Stahl was Zuccarillo and Greenway. What the hell? Victor Rask, Parisi, and Fiala. I don't know. It's it's weird. It's weird. And of course, spurgeon has been out for a while, still out. You're getting to see uh, Brennan Mendel and get some action, which I love. That's great. Carson Susie's been playing on the right side, but it doesn't matter. He's been playing on the correct side, whatever it is. Correct or incorrect, it's, he's been awesome. Uh, him and Brodine are probably the best defensive pairing, generally speaking, on Minnesota right now. Uh, Dumbo and Suter are like, you know, the, the top talents per se. And Spurgeon's the ultimate everything guy. But then you got, you know, defense and offense, basically intangibles, everything. That's Spurgeon. And I think he's a future captain of Minnesota, so some people say. I wouldn't disagree with that possibility. Brodine and Susie, again, have been just beautiful. Good, com- good combination, good chemistry. I can't complain about it. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. It's just a crying shame when you look at the forwards and you're seeing Victor Rask in the top six. It's like, and it's no offense. The guy's a wonderful bottom six, which, again, sounds weird considering how much criticism he's taken the past, uh, you know, past year or so since we acquired him from the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. Acquired him, pardon me, for... uh, Nino Nita Ryder, who's not had nearly as good of a season. Again, Nico Sturm, nice to see him out there, but nothing super exciting at the moment. 
Uh, he was good in the face-off circle, which is good. A lot of people see him as a future Koivu, possibly. Maybe a lesser version, but maybe, maybe, maybe. Just maybe slower to, to, to develop, even though Koivu took a while to get here out of Europe. But once he came, I was like, all right, pretty good. Um, very strong in the face-off circle, though, I'd have to say. He was the best guy on the team, considering, you know, he, he well... He was in seven face-offs. He did well. So, or eight face-offs, pardon me, five and three. Victor Rask got dominated. It is what it is. You're, you know, Vegas Golden Knights have lots of talent, man. I mean, William Carlson, Marcia Schultz, Mark Stone, Max Pacioretty, Paul Stanley, who's, you know, way past his prime at this stage, has still got some talent, obviously, uh, and banged up. <laughs> banged up all the time. He's missed so much time in his career. Paul Stanley, uh, Alex Tuck has been banged up, and he's way, way down there. He's been getting minimal ice time of late, third line, and uh, only 10 and a half minutes in the game, or 10 minutes, 11 minutes per se. At least he's not on the fourth line, but it is what it is. Uh, sad to see Alex Tuck kind of struggling with injury and such after such a strong year last year. Still a team, I think, that could win the Stanley Cup, but at this moment, I certainly wouldn't pick them to win it if I had to choose today. Uh, a Stanley Cup team, it's got to be Boston, right? I mean, it's got to be Boston. I'm not picking Washington. They, they got their cup. They're not going to win again. I wouldn't be surprised if it's St. Louis and Boston again, the way things are going, but who knows? Arizona, Edmonton, who knows? It'd be kind of cool to see one of those two teams make a huge playoff run, or even Calgary Flames. But uh, Obviously, Vegas, beautiful talent, love their jerseys. Some of you don't, some do. It's kind of a debated topic. Uh, we'll see. Uh, they have the roster, they have the players, they play strong defense. If Fleury can stay healthy, they got a chance to win it. Stay healthy and consistent, because he obviously is capable of having some icky games on occasion, like he did with Pittsburgh sometimes, and even a couple times last year, he wasn't so hot against the San Jose Sharks, nor were the players in front of him, per se, especially in, after they're blowing the Sharks out in Game 7 in the in the Shark Tank, and then things went awry very, very quickly after uh, Joe Pavosky got hit pretty good. It was an accidental thing with Paul Stansley, not intentional. Of course, everyone took it as it was intentional, just because uh form of motivation, and next thing you know, yeah, well, <laughs> history was made big time there. <sighs> well, I'm a fan of the Vegas Golden Knights in, in terms of what they're doing with their organization. They've done a hell of a job, absolutely awesome job. And, you know, they're kind of like a super duper version of what the Wild were. You know, finding diamonds in the rough. That's the one thing Doug Reisbrow did well, was he found some diamonds in the rough at the beginning. Uh, defense and offense, you know, Nate Schmidt, the former Gover, he's been awesome. He's been awesome. Uh, Shea Theodore had a huge game, blah, blah, blah. And, of course, acquiring Marc-Andre Fleury, there you go. But William Carlson, I mean, they had to do some research to get the right people in. And then they made some expensive uh, free agent signings with uh, Mark Stone and Max Pacioretty. Of course, Mark Stone was originally a trade. And then, again, you're, you know, he was a t temporary rental, but he was going to stay in Vegas. And, you know, if I was there, I don't think I'd want to leave. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to leave. So, as long as things are working out, which they are for Mark Stone leading that club nicely at the moment. With that said... Let's pass out the awards for this week. It's going to go to uh, the Mike Madonna Award. It's going to go to Eric Stahl. Very strong week. He got his 1,000th point. Very sweet. That is some insane, insane company there. Once you get into the 1,000 range, that's a big deal. Uh, too bad Koivu probably won't be uh, around long enough for that. 300 points is a long way to go. Uh, and it's, you know, Koivu's not going to have any 100-point seasons coming up, I don't think. So uh, Stahl had one way back when they won the Cup. And he had some 90-point, 80-point seasons. An amazing career for Eric Stahl. And he's on pace for about 65, 68 points again this year. So right back to being Eric Stahl again. You know, for Eric Stahl in Minnesota is about a 65, 70-point guy with the 42-goal, uh, 42 42 80-point jump a couple of years back. That was super-duper fun, where he just lulled goalies to sleep and then beat him with the quick hands. Love to see what Eric Stahl was capable of. My goodness, it was beautiful. But uh, still, it's a very strong season for him, generally speaking. Sucks to see so many injuries. Uh, well, we'll just you just have to hope Koivu's going to come back sooner than later. It sounds like he's having setbacks, sent back to Minnesota. You know, Spurgeon, it's a broken bone in his hand. I mean, broken bones heal as fast as broken bones heal. You know, I mean, you can't rush that. It, so, <clears throat> what, what are you going to do? And then personal issues with Devin Dubnik. You know, I mean, it's one thing after another. Not that the two goalies that would have been in the net have been bad. Stalock's had better days than he had uh, against, you know, Carolina, that's for sure. Kakinen got torched against uh, Edmonton and frickin' Patrick Kane. It didn't help, but we'll see. And, of course, Kakinen now is back in Iowa, so that's that transaction is completed now. Kakinen's going back to Iowa, and that team has not been playing well. They could sure use his help because he's 
Right now, he's definitely a star down in the AHL, and I do think Kakanen will be a regular NHL goalie very soon, and possibly as soon as next year. Uh, now the guilt trip comes in. Talking about trading Devin Dubnik, that might be the last thing you want to do right now in terms of, like, it, <laughs> you know, business is business. It's it's cutthroat and stuff, but, ooh, ugh, there's PR issues, too. Uh, that might look really bad. But, again, at the same time, with how he's played so far this year, with what's been going on, I'm sure, which has been a gigantic distraction. I mean, it would be a distraction for anybody. Any human would be distracted in that situation. But, um, yeah, I'm guessing his trade value is at an all-time low, unfortunately, for him anyway. So, well, maybe in the summer. Uh, I, I better be quiet, though, right? <laughs> it, it, he'll be going into a contract year, so maybe sometime next year. And we'll see what happens with Kakinen, Robson, blah, 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 uh, Jones, Hunter Jones, and uh, Derek Bjarbo. I don't know about that one at this point. Lindbergh, maybe he's got a better chance to move up uh, to the National Hockey League. But we'll see. I don't know about Derek Bjarbo so far in Iowa, but he's only 20. So 20-year-old goalies usually don't do so hot in the, in the professional level. They just don't. That's just an unfortunate fact. Again, Madonna Award is going to go to Eric Stahl. Honorable mention, strong honorable mention to Carson Susie because he's just been freaking awesome. Um, in general, I, I, you know, just, I, I there's just been some frustrating moments, generally speaking, Patrick Kane dominating players and such. Right now, I'm going to give the, uh, James Shepard Memorial just to the injuries at this point. It's like, I don't really want to rag on anybody right now with what's going on. The injuries have really hurt this team in a big way. I mean, they're the number one reason why the Wild are struggling. And you don't want to make excuses. Bill Guerin would tell you that right now. He'd say, hey. Next man up, we, we got to play, you know. Like it or not, there's a game tomorrow or blah, blah, blah. So, or tonight or whatever. That, that's what I like about Bill Guerin, and that's why this team, I think, has stepped up a bit. Uh, he's got that classic captain and the captain in the locker room mentality, which he, always, which he was for many years. So, that's a pretty cool general manager to have there. So, there you go. We'll take a quick break. We got three games to preview. Calgary Flames playing Minnesota. Yeah, that's going to be fun to watch, I hope, uh, coming up. We'll take a quick break and get back to that. Segment number two, we're going to preview three games, and we're going to look at the prospects, if humanly possible, coming up. Finally, a good night for one of them, somebody who is almost kind of removed from being a prospect. But anyhow, back to the Arizona Coyotes. Well, there we go. This is a team that's actually been hanging around in first place. Yeah, first place in the Pacific Division. Congratulations to them. Not a team I would be rooting against in a lot of ways, because, well, you know, there's nothing really to dislike about the Arizona Coyotes, and they just made a acquisition of Mr. Taylor Hall, so he's now a part of things. He's like one of the stars. Now you got Nick Schmaltz, the former Chicago Blackhawk, who's having a nice, strong season. Huge year a couple years ago with the Blackhawks. Of course, former uh, North Dakota alum, Clayton Keller, again, the one of the top prospects in the system, who's become one of the you know leaders of the team, this and that. Pieces here and there, Alex Galagoski, Oliver Ekman Larson, who's been an established defenseman. Derek Stepan, wow. But now, now you get Taylor Hall in the mix. A couple of top, pick, a couple of draft picks given up. Some uh, three prospects. Pretty big trade, and Taylor Hall getting an assist in his first game. So, it's a first place team that's getting better. <clears throat> Their most recent game was against the San Jose Sharks, three to two victory for the Arizona Coyotes. It's kind of been back forth, back forth, back forth. So if the trend continues, they'll actually lose to the Minnesota Wild in Arizona. I don't know. I don't know. Not with the Minnesota Wild lineup lately, or Iowa Wild lineup. Yeah, you know, guys like that. But uh, looks like some transactions may have been made very recently, though. Gerald Mayhew played for Iowa last night, so it looks to be a sent down once again. Kind of a back-and-forth situation with that, which is kind of funny, but it is what it is as well. As of course, yes, Gerald Mayhew was sent down. And yeah, he was already in the, in the factoring and the scoring, at least in the assist department. Last night, we'll talk about that shortly. Gerald May, who's mostly been in Iowa this year, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of sad because you'd like to see him get a crack at the NHL and stay for a while and see what he can do because we know he can play. But 
I, I don't know. I kind of, you know, I, I don't want to keep saying that phrase. You're probably tired of hearing it. Talented team, boy. Talented team. Darcy Kemper's keeping his goals against average under two. He's got two shutouts on the season. Save percentage, 93.5. Incredible. And Ranta, good, solid backup as well. He's had good moments, bad moments. He was pretty mediocre last year when he first got to uh, Arizona. And then Darcy Kemper emerged, and that's why Arizona was in the playoff hunt all the way to the end. Uh, this year, I think their chances of making the playoffs are super high. I like the Pacific Division, at least the top four teams in it for the most part. Heck, I even like the Sharks a little bit too, but you know, all the history and such. Los Angeles Kings had their runs, but I don't, I, I don't miss it too much at this point. Anaheim Ducks and Vancouver Canucks, I, these favorite teams. <laughs> I don't like those teams. Uh, cool to see Arizona, Vegas, Edmonton, and Calgary kind of leading the way and looking towards the postseason. i Happy to see that, to be quite honest. <clears throat> Forgive my voice. I've just been getting worse and worse. I apologize. Been, uh, I, it, I sound worse than I feel, I guess you could say. Or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's frustrating. But anyhow, the chances of the Wild beating Arizona, I'm not sure. Again, this is uh, tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Time against the Arizona Coyotes. Taylor Hall and the Arizona Coyotes. Clayton Keller, Nick Schmaltz, blah, blah, blah. Darcy Kemper. I think Arizona gets the win at the end of the day. You know, I'm just being honest, obviously. It's a... They're just a damn good team. You know, they're a damn good team right now. And again, you add Taylor Hall to the mix, they have a chance to be pretty good. Uh, Minnesota so far 2-0 and against Arizona, as I do remember very well. Maybe it's just one of those things where we actually beat teams when they're good and then lose to them when they suck. That's kind of what's going on. And of course, Darcy Kemper getting a little chirpy a couple games ago, uh, back on November the 9th. Minnesota has already won the season series. I just think uh, I just think Arizona wraps up the season series with a win. That's just my guess. That's just my belief. I don't think it's going to be the highest scoring game ever. It's two teams that don't score like crazy. Uh, again, adding Taylor Hall is going to help you. But, yeah, it's not going to be like, now Now they're scoring five goals a game. That's just, you know, I don't think that's where things are going to head, particularly with the Coyotes. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're 21st in the league in goals for. It's the goals against where they're spectacular. And the penalty minutes, they're pretty disciplined. Penalty kill, power play, they're kind of in the middle, basically. They're basically in the middle, 13-14 range. I think Arizona wins this thing 3-2, to two, something along those lines. Most likely guy to score. It's not going to be Jason Sucker because he's going to be out for a while too. It's just unbelievable how many guys are out. Kind of surprising. You'd think Mayhew would be in the lineup, but uh, maybe he'll come back up. I, I don't know. It's confusing. But they keep sending him up, sending him down, sending him up, sending him down. Oh, it's frustrating. It's a nasty situation with the Wild right now with their lines. and Oh, boy. It's... <sighs> I, I don't know. I, it's, it's a very depleted team. That's just all there is to say. Arizona's going to get the win 3-2, to two, maybe even 3-1. to one, But most likely a guy to score in the game for Minnesota. Hmm. Uh, Kevin Fiala's going to score again. He's been fantastic. He's been on the top line with uh, Victor Rask Zach, and Zach Parisi. Victor Rask right now is the, considered the top line center, which is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. I, I don't know. Uh I don't know what to make of that one. Nico Sturm. Nico, not Miko. Nico Sturm, fourth line center. Luke Johnson is centering the third line with Donato and Cunning. Boy, it's strange. Very strange. Fiala's still playing on the right side. That's kind of funny because you still have that many left shots. Felino, Donato. Donato. Felino, Donato. Greenway and Palize. So yeah, that's just kind of how that goes at this point. Arizona wins 3-2 to two over your Minnesota Wild. Unfortunately, that's just my belief. We'll move forward now. Three games to preview, of course. We get to play the Winnipeg Jets. A bit of a border battle, I guess. Uh, getting there close enough on the northern border rather than eastern border. Another fan base that travels well. This and that, this and that. It's an entertaining matchup. It always has been. Minnesota had tons of success against Winnipeg last season. Tons of success. It was crazy. I mean, we just swept them right out of there in five games after they destroyed us in the playoffs the year before. So far, though, Winnipeg's getting their revenge. 5 nothing, uh, five to 2 victory on October the 10th, back when Minnesota's playing horrible at the beginning of the season. Obviously, we've, we've been different. And again, now, again, with such a depleted lineup, my faith level's not too high. But I do believe if there is a win in these three games, cause I, I, I don't want to come out here and just say the Wild are going to go 0-3, because I don't believe that. Um, as depleted a lineup as it was, the Wild really held their own against the Vegas Golden Knights, which is pretty impressive. That's a deep team. They're, again, similar to Arizona in the defense 
and goaltending is better than the scoring, but of course, Vegas has scores too, and there's a reason why they've been considered a Stanley Cup, uh, you know, contender the last several years, uh, several years, last couple years, they've been a Stanley Cup contender since they put on the jersey, which is weird. Nobody really believed it until it finally happened. It's just still weird to imagine a team could come into the NHL and go to the finals and almost win it until they ran into a freight train. Um, but if the Wild do win a game in this three-game stretch, I do believe it will be against the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, and I'm going to pick a victory December the 21st as we're heading into Christmas week. Unfortunately, because it's too fast. I, I, I hate to see it fly by. That's why I'm a little bit sad about it. One of those matinee games, Saturday at 1 p.m., matinee. Yep, so uh, matinee games. At least the Wild have had some success in those this year because most of the time we haven't. Most of the time it's been mm, not been so good. That Philadelphia game was pretty wonderful, though. 4-1 to one victory over the Philadelphia Flyers. That was quite unexpected. Uh, though that was an evening game. That wasn't even matinee. Uh, but we've had matinee games this year and actually had a little bit of success. Hellebuck, Hellebuck's the goaltender. Goaltending goal average about uh, save percentage, pardon me, a little under uh, 93%. A couple of shutouts on the season. Solid season. Definitely better than last year. It had been a complete mess, a disaster in Winnipeg last year. It was just a disaster. They missed the playoffs for a reason. Um, they were not good last year. This year, they're back in the mix again. They're now third in the Central Division which is interesting, tied with the Dallas Stars with 42 points. Only five points ahead of Minnesota, but then again, five points is a lot. And Winnipeg actually is the one with the game in hand this time. We can't use that as an excuse to be behind Winnipeg or whoever. Patrick Laine, guys like that, 32 points on the year. Mark Shuffle, uh, 16 goals, leading the club in every category. Blake Wheeler piling up the assists like he is wont to do. They're not a great team. They're not a perfect team. I don't think they're winning any Stanley Cup or anything, but they're always a threat. They're dangerous. I love the way Minnesota plays against this team generally, except, you know, earlier this season. Winnipeg Jets, <clears throat> they're 3-2 and two in their last five. They actually lost to Detroit recently. Wow, where that actually is not a good thing these days. It usually it was it used to be the norm years ago, but it's getting to be quite a while ago now. Recently beat Anaheim, beat Detroit. 5-2 to two loss at Detroit whew, on the 12th. Crushed Philadelphia seven to three. That's impressive. And then getting crushed by Carolina six to three at home. Where the Winnipeg Jets. Carolina's an excellent team, obviously. I think they're a Stanley Cup contender too. I actually have them in the finals with Vegas at the beginning of the season. I had that pick with Vegas taking the cup. We'll see. Maybe Carolina takes the cup. I would not be surprised, actually. I would not be surprised if the Carolina Hurricanes win the Stanley Cup this year. That might be where I'm gonna go at the end of the year. Well we'll see what happens. Uh I think the Wild have an inspired effort here. Maybe, miraculously, somebody returns. I don't know. It sounds like nobody's coming back other than Devin Dubnik, possibly, as soon as uh, tonight <sighs> versus the Arizona Coyotes. I wouldn't be too surprised if he plays against his old team. Of course, that's where the Wild uh, acquired Devin Dubnik from for a third-round pick. Pretty good trade, obviously. Uh, third-round picks have their value, but it's not immediate, and it's certainly not guaranteed. And Devin Dubnik was a, a you know, obviously an upgrade from what Tarsi Kemper was. Isn't that just the weirdest thing? Ever. It always turns out that way, doesn't it? Somehow, some way, it turns out that in, in that situation where where does Darcy Kemper wind up eventually in the, in a couple of years and he ends up being like really good? Arizona. So that figures, doesn't it? Uh, God bless uh, Devin Dubnik, of course. I'm not here to bash him right now. He just can't do it right now. You gotta wait. You gotta wait right now. Gotta wait. I'm not gonna bash him anyway. It's not about bashing him. It's just about, is he past his prime? Is he this? Is he that? I think he's past his prime. I think it's okay to say that. I, I, it's not even past his prime because he stinks. It's past his prime because he's been overused a bit. Uh, I think this rest will have helped him. I would expect an inspired effort. Possibly, he might really shut down this Winnipeg team. If he plays in both of the games, we'll see. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Alex Stalock and Nett in one of these just because that's probably the way it's going. Uh, you're not going to see Kakinen for a while, unfortunately, unless something else happens. Someone else gets hurt or whatever. One of the two goalies gets hurt or... I don't know. That's that's the sucky part about Kakinen. Or somebody gets traded. That's the other thing I'm, I'm trying to get to here. Uh, Winnipeg will be playing Chicago tonight. So that's coming up as well. Coming up tonight on the 19th. So we'll see what happens. <clears throat> with that one, two teams, uh, I'd, I'd probably pick Carolina, or excuse me, Winnipeg on that one, for sure. I'd, I would think so, Winnipeg, but if it's us, it's Chicago every bleeping time. Minnesota wins, though, an inspired effort, regardless of what happens. 
Oh boy, I think Luke Cunning lights the lamp for his eighth goal of the season. I got a good feeling about that. Fiala's going to get his ninth tonight versus the Arizona Coyotes, but I think Luke Cunning is going to light the lamp versus the Winnipeg Jets. I expect an inspired effort for Minnesota. 4-2 to two victory over the Winnipeg Jets. Kind of an unexpected type of situation, be it an empty net or whatever, but I, I believe Minnesota gets four goals against the Winnipeg Jets and gets the job done, possibly getting Devin Dubnik's first win as uh, you know since, since he's returned from being out for quite a while, of course. <clears throat> so do check out uh, Michael Russo's article on The Athletic about Devin Dubnik opening up, and of course the Athletic is awesome, and Michael Russo is so good. He's so good at what he does. I'll recommend him forever. You know, he doesn't need my help, but I'll I'll just throw it throw it out there anyway. He's a fantastic columnist that I highly recommend. Loved him with the strip and this and that. Uh, wouldn't mind getting to know the guy someday. I wouldn't mind at all. That'd be pretty cool. Shoot the breeze about hockey, but we'll see. Cal Gary Flames, one of my favorite teams in the NHL, believe it or not, other than the Wild. And of course, it's okay to like another team, just not necessarily be like, oh, rah, rah, re about them. It's okay to say, yeah, I kind of like them, just like I kind of like Vegas, this and that. Even kind of like Arizona with what they're doing. It's it, it's cool. It's hap- I'm happy to see them do well. Colorado's the one I'm not happy to see do well, and we'll preview that game next week. That'll be a national TV game. And that'll unfortunately be already after Christmas. Ugh, it just goes by too fast. Too fast. I won't miss the crowded malls and the crowded grocery stores and the crowded this and the crowded that. I hate crowds so much. You you don't even understand how much I hate crowds. I just, ugh, can't take it. But um, I'll miss a lot of things. It's, it's always sad to feel like it's over already. I guess you know, the Christmas lights will still be out, but the vibe is just not the same. It's not the same. It's no longer Christmas season. It's whatever, New Year's, woo-hoo, <laughs> la-di-da. <laughs> I don't care about New Year's. Calgary Flames... And this one is in XL Energy Center. Wild get a couple of home games here. Winnipeg and Calgary. Visitors from Manitoba and then Alberta. Calgary Flames who have been up and down, up and down all season. David Riddick, obviously one of, uh, one of the better goalies. He's decent. You know, he has good moments and he doesn't have good moments. A couple of shutouts on the season. And this is another team that exchanged players in weird like webs and such. Just again how Darcy Kemper magically winds up in Arizona somehow of all teams. Calgary and Edmonton have been back and forth, like I always talk about. <laughs> I've been talking about this for a while, like all season. Cam Talbot, Mike Smith, uh, Lucich, and uh, uh, James Neal moving around back and forth. A lot of the same guys are still there, though. And Milan Lucich, God. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> that contract he had with Edmonton and the production level compared to the contract. Yikes. Monahan, yep. Get the talented players, Elias Lindholm. None of these guys are playing as well as they were last year. Like, they were just tearing up the league last year. It was fun to watch. The speed, the scoring, the explosiveness. Uh, Johnny Hockey, Johnny Goudreau. It's almost like, again, just kind of poke him in his hands, and he's not the same. <clears throat> and it's frustrating. And Calgary shows out there talking about eventually they believe Johnny Goudreau will be traded from the Calgary Flames. So we'll see what happens there. They don't believe they're going to keep him forever. Maybe because they don't think he's maybe they don't think he's worth like a franchise player money. For well, I mean, he did absolutely nothing last year in the playoffs. I, it, it, you know, I mean, you can't really get around that. I'm afraid. Mark Giordano has been there forever. Great talent. <clears throat> he's had some quiet spells, and then he picks it up again. Last year he was downright fantastic. Uh, right there with the Norris Trophy and all that in the 50 point range. Unbelievable season for Giordano. I, I believe he even got 60 points last year. Uh, Matthew Tuchuk, one of the more talented players in the league. Definitely the future of the Calgary Flames. A bit of a chippy guy. It is what it is there, too. Kind of like how, you know, player, players with Minnesota, and I like to see how Greenway's toughing up and getting stronger and stronger and stronger. He might be a guy like that. Unfortunately, the scoring is just not not nearly on Matthew Tuchuk's level at this stage. And yes, Matthew and Brady Tuchuk are the sons of who? Yeah, Keith Tuchuk, of course, former Arizona Coyote, Winnipeg Jet, the original Winnipeg Jets, and all that good stuff. So, because, yeah, of course, the Winnipeg Jets are Arizona. Yes, the original Winnipeg Jets are Arizona, blah, blah, blah. David Riddich, though, 2.73 goals against average, an ever-beatable guy, Riddick, pardon me, 15-8 and eight on the season. Talbot, if you see him in net, you got to take advantage, you got to get the win against this club. Calgary has just been, again, I keep saying it, up and down all season. I don't know who they are. Are they the division champion they were last year? A legitimate cup contender? Or are they just a bubble team like they've been, you know, the last decade? A bubble team. Minnesota and Calgary have not played yet this year. Minnesota lucked out this year. Well, obviously it changes every year. Two home games this year and 
Neg- uh, obviously, probably expect two road games next year. It's three three games because it's a conference, but not division rival. 23rd of December, 5th of January, so we're coming up again. Exit Energy Center again with the Calgary Flames. It's going to be a bit of a blitz here, and before you know it, this series will be over. Hopefully, Minnesota can pull it out. Calgary Flames. We're going to Calgary, Alberta, the Saddle Dome, the Sea of Red. Call it everything it is. <laughs> 9th, yeah, excuse me, 9th of January. We'll go to Calgary, Alberta. This is darn, I, I, this is, I, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing because you think about this when you compare the two teams. Minnesota's ahead in almost all the offensive categories. What the hell? That's weird. Um, they're both not good in the goals against, obviously, because Stalock gives up almost three goals a game. You know, and Kakinen started out phenomenally, and of course it started to change a little bit with Edmonton and Chicago. And Wilder, 29th, is giving up goals. Calgary's 22nd. That's not great, but a little bit better. Like, Riddick is a little bit, Riddick is a little bit more stable. But to think, Calgary's 29th in the league in goals for Minnesota's 15th. That's really weird. Calgary's just, you know, drying up, basically, offensively. If they can pick up the offense again like they did last year, then there you go. Then they are going to win the division. Uh, the Pacific Division is very winnable right now. As good as Vegas is, and as good as Arizona's, uh, Arizona is, pardon me, there's not much distance between the Calgary Flames and the, <clears throat> you know, teams like Arizona. The Arizona Coyotes, Vegas, only three points behind Vegas, two points behind their arch rival Edmonton Oilers, four points behind Zona, if I already didn't, didn't mention that. So, pretty close. Pretty close situation there. Calgary, are three and two. It's like you can just call everybody three and two, but they have lost two in a row. They had an influential run a few weeks back. Big, 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 big win streak for the Calgary Flames, and it ended with a thud. A 4 nothing shutout versus Cal- uh, Carolina, pardon me. And then Jerry just recently shut them down for Pittsburgh. The, the young goalie in Pittsburgh, not Jerry. Jerry's the last name with an A. <laughs> it's interesting stuff. Um, nice fantasy pickup for some people out there. Another guy who emerged just like last year. I forget the guy's name now. I don't remember. Oh, well, it's okay. I, unfortunately, he's not there right now. So it is what it is. They'd won three in a row, did Calgary versus Colorado. Very impressive. Beat Arizona, beat Toronto. That's pretty good. And then again, thrashed by Carolina and Pittsburgh. Eight to one debacle when you combine those two games together. That's not much to talk about. Again, streaky. They're a streaky team. Can Minnesota get a nice surprising win over the Calgary Flames? I think we absolutely can. They're not what they've been. They're not what they were last year when they destroyed us last year when we played the Calgary Flames. It was kind of almost like a... They were just having a ball out there, and Minnesota was struggling. <sighs> Can I be an optimist and pick a win here, even with a depleted lineup? I mean, because I don't like what Calgary's doing right now. I'm not impressed right now with how Calgary's playing. Flat out disappointed in them, actually. Uh, but between now and then, they'll be hosting the Montreal Canadiens. I think they'll beat the Canadiens and then lose to the Dallas Stars. And I would not be surprised if they lose to Minnesota, uh, the Calgary Flames, anyway. Uh, lost a couple of home games recently. Yep, that's where the Carolina and Pittsburgh ones after beating Toronto. The, they had been pretty good on the road. Interesting. Road Warriors so far this year, Calgary. Like Minnesota last year, and <laughs> now Minnesota's good at home. I'm going to pick a win. I think I'm going to pick a low-scoring 2-1 to one game type of situation. Dubnik, Pop possibly in that. Maybe Staylock, you know, moving around faster, obviously because he has to. Less uh, reach than Devin Dubnik. I'm going to expect a low-scoring game here. 3-1, to 2-1 to one type of game. 3-2. to two. I'm going to go with 2-1. to one. And the most likely guy to score for Minnesota. Let's go with... Oh, man. Let's go with Eric Stahl against the uh, Calgary Flames. I think he'll continue his run. A positive run that he's been on. Would love to see Zucker back, but it sounds like it's going to be a while. So, I, I don't know. It's going to be a weird lineup. Maybe you'll get Gerald Mayhew back out there and he'll score against Calgary. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, one of those minor leaguers, minor leaguers, fringe NHLers like Mayhew, Luke Johnson, somebody like that, ends up being the hero in the Calgary game. I got a sneaky feeling it's going to be something something like that, like a, a late goal by somebody very unexpected. Um, uh, Nico Sturm, which would be great. A lot of people do see him absolutely as a long-term NHL center, possibly, you know, top, bottom six, of course, third line, fourth line center, that type of situation. But um, I'm expecting a 2-1 to one victory for Minnesota. A, a nice effort shutting this team down significantly. Maybe even a shutout, but I'll pick 2-1. to one. And Nico Sturm is going to be the guy that's going to score the goal for the uh, Minnesota Wild. Uh, that's going to be one of the, that's going to be the big moment. 
maybe it'll be fairly early, and then it'll be it'll be shut down city by the gritty effort of some of these younger guys with Greenways, Cunning, Eck will be uh, shutting people down. They might be the geek squad, but they sure are tough. They're the toughest geeks you've ever seen. So <laughs> geeks usually you think are wimps. These guys are not wimps. So that, that that's the cool part. Three, uh, excuse me, two to one victory for Minnesota, and I think that puts the Wild at two to one. Surprisingly, two and one this week. Surprisingly, I just don't have the Wild beating Arizona. Maybe we lose to Winnipeg. I don't know, but I got a feeling the Wild will beat Calgary, a team that has owned us forever, forever, except very, very, very early in the franchise history. A couple of influential wins versus this club, uh, but I remember Charlie Coyle had like a second goal of the season in like December years ago when the Wild were you know, struggling a bit, but then we were putting in the super tough defense and we started winning games that way. And then the goals started coming, you know, and this and that, how the wild always go on their hot runs here and there during the Mike Yo and Bruce Boudreaux era, especially Mike Yo, very streaky up and down team during the Yo era, but it's kind of always been that way, hasn't it? With this group ever since the Parisi Suter era has uh, been, been upon us. And we've been a kind of a playoff team. Well, very much a playoff team most of the time since then. 2-1 victory for Minnesota. Let's look at the prospects. And as per usual, we will start with the Iowa Wild against Sam Honest. Sam Honest is now officially leading the club in scoring. Gerald Mayhew had been kind of up and down a couple times with Minnesota, so he's got less games in hand, so to speak, versus Sam Honest. Yeah, games in hand. He's <laughs> three less games, but certainly has... The most points per game, this and that, between the two. Honest with 24 points, 7 goals. He's been racking up the assists this year, more so. And where Mayhew has definitely been the goal-scoring guy. He's been the uh, Jason Zucker, so to speak, for the uh, Iowa Wild. He can definitely score <laughs> in a big way. Brennan Mendel is going to continue to stand in for Minnesota, and he's just been a one, uh, wonderful job, even though, unfortunately, he's in a very limited role on the third pairing, so... He's not out there for very many scoring opportunities, so unfortunately, May and Menel so far scoreless for the Wild, but 19 points. Still third on the team in scoring for Iowa. Nico Sturm is, of course, up with Minnesota. He's been picking up points, had been picking up points with Iowa recently. 12 now on the year in 25 games. Not bad. Six goals, six assists. Nice to see Nico Sturm kind of break it through after a very slow start. Belpedio Got three points the past week. He's now at 11. Has he been so quiet? Been so freaking quiet. Has had Belpedio been? He's now at 11 points for the Iowa Wild. Good for him. Uh, Brandon DeHeim got his uh, eighth point with an assist last night. Luke Johnson, of course, is up with Minnesota. Only 10 games in Iowa so far this year for the Grand Forks native. Uh, but seven, seven points so far in those 10 games. Very, very, very productive for the Iowa Wild in the limited action so far for him. And Dmitry Sokolov, a guy who'd been kind of buried and <laughs> kind of hidden ECHL for us for, for a little while and then just scratched every other night for uh, Iowa, pretty much every night, just about. Now he's at 10 games, but he had three points last night, two goals and an assist, which puts him at a half point a game. Good for him. Five points now in 10 games. He's still only 21 years old. The problem with him has been, you know, his defense is non-existent and his skating is just not there. And, well, what do people complain about Tuka Rask? Uh, Tuka Rask. Victor Rask. Skating. That's why Victor Rask isn't a top, uh, you know, top six type of guy. We're lucky to get the gritty effort he's giving us and an occasional scoring on the fourth line in Victor Rask's case, even though he'd been a 48-point guy in the past for Carolina uh, in a second-round pick, by the way. <clears throat> Connor DeWeer added his fourth point of the season, his third goal. Good for him. That makes you feel better. And you got to think again, Cabo and being a part of things, now getting his eighth win of the season, stabilizing things. The Iowa Wild finally won a game again. Oof, four to three victory. For the Iowa Wild, it's about bleeping time. Oh, they've been struggling. They're like losing every freaking game. Greg Pattern has been up with Minnesota, but not been activated at all. He is he played only one uh, rehab stint with the Iowa Wild, and he's not been up in Minnesota or not been playing for Minnesota since. I'm I'm okay with that. I'd rather see Brennan Mental, frankly. I would rather see Brennan Mental. Uh, I'd rather see. Carson Soucy, and you could go on and on and on and on. Pattern, of course, is right shot, so you're talking Brennan Mental here when, uh, when it comes to things. Brennan Mental or Belpedio, guys like that, or Brad Hunt, of course, who is a left shot, but he is capable of playing on the right side. <laughs> it's just, again, it is what it is. Too many left shots <clears throat> on this roster on you know for forwards and defensemen. That's just how it's been the last five years or so. It's been an ongoing thing, and it's not changing too quickly. It's not. Uh, Gerald Mayhew's got that right shot, but unfortunately, 
They're just not having him up in Minnesota very much. Did get a, his seventh assist last night, though. Good for him. <laughs> much needed assist compared to his goals there. Kind of doing a Parisi more than Zucker even this season. But nice to see Kakinen get back in that and stabilize things a little bit for Iowa and finally get a win. Oh, they were so good earlier. And then they're just so awful the last three weeks or so. It was depressing talking about them every week. Oh, like really? That That's it? Of course, college hockey's generally been shut down, but uh, Matt Boldy's now at three points on the season. He's been quietly chipping away, got his second assist, good for him. Three points in 15 games for Matt Boldy, Matt Boldy, Matthew Boldy for Boston College, as of course certain colleges have been playing on these odd days during the break. Minnesota Gophers, of course, have been shut down. Obviously, you know, it is what it is. Winter break, as I call it, Christmas break. They, they call it the other thing. Um... <laughs> But now, unfortunately, we have to talk about the passing of Doug Wogue. Uh, he'd been ill for quite a while, and it had been kind of good and gradually, gradually, gradually worse. Uh, 75 years old, Doug Wogue passes away from South St. Paul. Of course, the Golden Gophers coach for our, from about 84 to 99, 14, 15 years for Minnesota, 85 to 99. Uh, much success for Doug Wogue. Unfortunately, no national championship. Only got to the final game once. And lost an OT in the Civic Center oh, to Harvard. Oh. oh, it's heartbreaking. Luckily, several years later, the Gophers would win a national championship in overtime with Maine. But to think it went from 89 to 2002 for the Gophers to get back. That's too long. Gophers went back to back. But those, those were in the Don Lucia era. Uh, but a lot of the players for those national championship teams were Doug Wu recru- uh, recruits. Not everybody, particularly on the 2003 team. But the 02 team... The seniors and the leaders of that team were absolutely Wooger, uh, Wooger recruits. <sighs> Looked on as one of the friendliest men of all time. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like uh, Pat Micheletti had a little spat with him very early because Wooger kind of told him, hey, you're not doing this right, this right, this right. And Pat Micheletti kind of cursed him out, and then they had an understanding, and they got along ever since. Kind of cra- kind of crazy, kind of cool, but that's how relationships start sometimes. You know, like I had a supervisor years ago, uh, you know, the beginning was a little rough, and then just, they love each other, you know. And then and then they keep switching the soups around, or they did anyway, and back to the other one again, which is disappointing. I'd take Rob back any day if I could. Maybe I shouldn't go public with that, but it doesn't matter. Nobody knows anybody anyway that's listening, I would hope. So, oh, man, what a, <laughs> what a good guy he was. Uh, but, no, in uh, Doug Woog's case, an amazing guy that everybody, uh, everybody that has ever met him, they say he's basically the nicest guy ever. Uh, uh, much success with the Gophers. I mean, you know, even though they didn't win a national championship, what did they get to the Frozen Four slash Final Four? I think they still call it the Final Four most of the time during his year. In fact, I believe it didn't become the Frozen Four until like 2000-ish. Yet now they call everything, even 50 years ago, the Frozen Four when it wasn't. (laughs) It was still the Final Four back then, uh, at least four times. But unfortunately, only to the national championship game once. So... But would you take that back? Would you take the competitiveness? Like WCHA champions, like every other year, it seemed like we were in the mix every year. It was always like, is this the year they're going to win the national championship? Is this the year they're going to win the national championship? It was always like that in that era. Doug Woog, and then the first, you know, few years with uh, Don Lucia. And then, you know, things got... Uh, and, and then it kind of, they, they started to get good again with Lucia and then dropped off. In the last couple of years, it's just been awful. The last couple of years of Lucia's uh, era and then on to Bob Moscow, which I think is a who I think is a good coach, but it's going to take time, unfortunately, because the reputation is gone. I mean, the Gophers feel, again, I've been calling them this the last couple of weeks here. They feel like Vermont and, and Lake Superior, you know, a once proud program that barely exists right now. And that's what it feels like. And like I'm saying, even though they didn't win the national championship, which I want more than anything. I want the national championship. I want to be in the mix for the national title every year, every other year, like Duluth, Denver, teams like that, North Dakota. But at least be in the mix for it every year like we were in the Woo gear. I would take that back so fast right now. I mean, it's just, you, you, you long for those days. And the success that Doug Woog brought was uh, absolutely fantastic. So God bless you, Doug Woog. We'll give you a moment of silence. Oh, for the days of Doug Woog with that team. The success was, was really something. It was fun to watch. And whenever you brought up the words go for hockey, you're like, now that's a good team. It was always like that. Like go for football, oh, go go for basketball, oh, you know, good good and good and not good. 
and then go for hockey. Like, oh yeah, they're they're just they're great every year. So, boy, do I miss that. And it was it was fun. So let's look at the other prospects. Vladislav Firstov, who again a Russian playing for the U of Connecticut, he's been productive. Ten points in the sixteen games that he's played thus far. He's a plus one. Hunter Jones, again the top goalie prospect in the you know in the OHL anyway at this point. 2.51 goals against average and a 20 and 3 record for the Peterborough Peets. Unbelievable victory, uh, unbelievable record there, and pretty good goals against average. But I still consider uh, Kakinen at the moment the goalie of the immediate future coming up, the not too distant future at this stage. We'll see what happens with Hunter Jones and such. There's going to be some competition for that job. And um, Alexander Kovanov at literally two points a game, 53 points in his 26 games. They have been absolutely fantastic. Have the Montcons, Montcon Wildcats. He has been unbelievable. He's way up there. Been absolutely spectacular for them. Sam Henches continues to be extremely productive also for a struggling St. Cloud State team. He was playing a little bit better. He's already exceeded last year's point total in only 16 games. He's at 21 points in only 16 games. Unbelievable. He got 20 points last year. 10 goals, 10 assists. This year he's 14 assists already, 7 goals. I'm expecting, I'm expecting good things from this guy, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so far, more productive than Nick Sweeney. Uh, uh, seventh round pick just the year before in 2017. Sweeney, though, has been very clutch overall in his days with Duluth. And, you know, and I'm not trying to say anything bad about Sweeney. He's been unbelievable. He's, he, he's at about a point a game. He's at a better pace than he'd been the past few years, and yet he's gotten better every year. 15 goals last year, which led the club in scoring for the national champion Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. And will they be the first team to three-peat? Maybe. I don't think they're off to that, that kind of a start this year, but who knows? Anything can happen. I mean, Minnesota Duluth won the national championship in Sweeney's freshman year with the lowest seed in the tournament. They made it by uh, they made it by a sliver. I mean, we're talking a sliver. They made it, and they won it all. So sometimes you just got to make it, just like Harvard <clears throat> years ago. Things happen. Crazy things happen, and teams can uh, go all the way and pull off upsets that you just are blown away by. Look at the ECHL a little bit. Jack Sadick now at eight points. Good for him. He's got his fifth assist recently. He's been productive for the most part, but again, it's the Allen Americans, so we'll see what happens with him. I hope for him. I hope for his sake. I mean, obviously, they're just it's just kind of too busy right now in Iowa. Lots of uh, veterans and young prospects in Iowa. That's the problem. That's why both him and Nick Bokar are stuck in the ECHL, both right shot defensemen. Lots of competition for those positions. <clears throat> so if somebody gets traded or moves up to the NHL, this and that, maybe eventually Boca and Seda can at least skate for Iowa, where they're then just one step away from the NHL instead of two steps away from the NHL. But Boca's offense has been pretty productive considering he barely barely scored at all. Point, uh, barely was scoring at all for uh, Michigan. More of a physical stay-at-home defenseman type. But he's, he's poked in a few poked in a few and help uh, assist in some goals for the Allen Americans, at least. With that said, I think that's about it at the moment. Obviously, Kirill Kabrizov, it is what it is. We're still waiting. You know, here comes April. Can't wait. Yeah, we could only just mention his name 100,000 more times, I suppose. And can't wait till he's here. That's what's got people excited about the future for this team. Somebody's eventually going to get traded because they're going to have to. It sucks that Zucker's hurt because that hurts that right there. If he's gonna, if you want to trade Zucker, or if teams are offering for Zucker or had been offering for Zucker, that kind of hurts that cause at the moment. Unfortunately, lowers his value, and of course, when a guy's hurt, it you know can't really trade him. So that's where we're stuck at the moment. Uh, look at Jack McBain very briefly here as well. He's at nine points. He's been picking it up compared to last year. He's already almost at his point total of thirteen in thirty-five games last year. Thus far, he's got 20 games to go to catch up to last season, so he's been more productive, and of course, Boston College is a different team. They had a very, 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 very down year, and Minnesota has multiple prospects for that Boston College club, so hopefully they can continue success there. That would be very nice indeed. With that said, let's look at the, uh, let's get to the contact details, at Brave the Wild for the Twitter account, facebook.com forward slash Brave the Wild. Facebook.com forward slash Brave the Wild dot Minnesota. I apologize for that. And of course, Facebook.com forward slash MNW players. Major shout out to that. W prospects. MNW prospects. I don't know why I keep saying that. It was MNW players. Now it's MNW. Uh. <laughs> oh, 
it was MNW prospects. No, it's MNW players. It's been back and forth. I apologize for that. Oh, it's funny stuff. But uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, website that I highly recommend. MNW prospects. Uh, everybody from Jack Sadick up to Eric Stahl, as in ECHL, up to the National Hockey League veterans in the NHL, youngsters down in the ECHL and Iowa. And, of course, Hunter Jones, OHL. We keep up with all the prospects. I'm proud to be an admin of that page. I'll constantly give shout-outs and encourage my listeners to join it because we all work together. Uh, Merrick Skyba, of course, Pavel Burnett, Justin Back. Uh, thank you guys so much for allowing me to be a part of things there. And, of course, uh, shout-out to Minnesota Wild Global, Scott Cavendish. Big fan of his and what he's done with that page, getting things going. Kind enough to allow me to post links to uh, Brave the Wild on that page as well. Can't thank you enough. And uh, great page to go for in-game threads. And, of course, other wild news that pops up because you don't know. Injuries, guys coming back, this and that. Hopefully we'll stay away from the injuries for, like, a long time, maybe forever. Of course, injuries happen, but you're hoping for less and less and less and less. Okay, well... As for MNW Prospects and, of course, Brave the Wild on Facebook and on Twitter, I will have contact details for those all in the show description. Final thing I want to say is I'd like to get you on the show, get your voice on the show with an audio submission if you could. Also, if you could write a positive rating for Brave the Wild on iTunes slash Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, if you could do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. Stitcher, if, if it's available on there for you to do that. If you could write a positive review about the show, I'd greatly, greatly appreciate it and give you a shout-out and a thank you on air if you could do that. But again, down to the audio submission. Every uh, smart device on the planet has a free voice recording application built into it. So just click on that, record, treat it like a phone call, hit stop, save it, and email it, slash send it to paladinolive at yahoo.com, paladinolive at yahoo.com would be greatly appreciated. I would then convert it into an MB3 file thanks to Zumzar or Converto.com, which is free for me because it's a small file. If you need to convert a larger file, like a whole show or something, or God knows what, uh, there'd be uh, you'd be signing up for a very uh, a cheap monthly subscription, which isn't asking much considering what it is, what they're doing. It's a nice, awesome thing when you need to convert a file, a sound file, into something else, or just a file in general. I uh, love being able to do that. I'm more than happy to give them a free plug because they give me a free service. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta thank them somehow that way. With that said, I encourage others to join it. So their page is always there for you to make file conversions. So it is what it is. With that said, we will look on in the next week. I want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas. And if you celebrate anything else, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, however direction you go. But uh, Merry Christmas as Christmas is here. Now, unfortunately, it's going to be over next time we do a show. I can't believe how fast it is. Too fast. But uh, looking at the snow outside, it's nice. Sun glaring off of the snow right now. Yep, nice to see a sunny day once in a while. It's been cloudy. It's cloudy every fall slash early winter. So hopefully Minnesota can get that 2 and one record that I'm thinking about. It would be cool to see the Wild beat the Calgary Flames and the Winnipeg Jets. How about a sweep? Wouldn't that be spectacular? But 2 and one ain't bad. 2 and one ain't bad, as Meatloaf once said. Take care. Merry Christmas. We will talk to you in a week.